I bought the Huawei 5885 mobile router. I already had the Huawei E5372. Huawei's a company who don't have the greatest of reputations right now, but I'm taking the chance because they do make some good mobile router products. So the, the 5372 is really great. You can see it's a small size that easily slips into your pocket. Lasts four to six hours, depending on the use. Now, what I really wanted was a larger battery, longer battery life, better, if possible, connectivity, stronger signal. In terms of how much more battery do you get, it's got 6,400 milliamp hour battery, which means 24 hours with, you know, pretty decent use. Now I say 24 hours because it has a sleep feature and you can set that in its settings. Now, I will say there's an app for the Huawei, but you can also use it in a browser. So if you're on a laptop, but not if you're on a tablet because it will still pick it up as a mobile device. But if you're on say a laptop and you go into the browser, you get a lot more settings accessing the built-in control software than you do if you use the app. Now, one of the settings you can use via the browser is to adjust its sleep function. So you can set it so that if there's no activity over a set period of time, and by default it's 10 minutes, but you can change that to longer periods, it will go into sleep mode. When it goes into sleep mode, the only way to get it out of sleep mode is not by, oh, some activity. You have to physically touch the power button, which is there. I find that awkward in use. I want to just leave it on and not have to think about it again. But if you use a sleep function, it's basically unlimited battery. It will, you know, it's basically almost turning off and it takes a touch of the button to bring it out of an almost complete off type situation. It's basically hibernating. I don't like to use that. But so without sleep function, 24 hours, whereas like four to six hours with this little thing, but yeah, it slips in your pocket. You can still get this in your pocket, but obviously it's a little bit more bulky, but 24 hours with use. That to me was brilliant. You can of course use it while it's on USB. If you use it while it's on USB, of course, again, unlimited on time because it's probably on charge, but probably not the best of ways to use it because your battery is gonna be affected by having it powered the whole time. It has an OLED LCD. So you do get information on its little LCD there, which is, you know, who you're connected to, the signal strength, the battery, how much data you've used. And obviously you can reset that via its app or, the, or its browser. And an extra press will take you into showing your password, showing the SSID. Another press will show you the IP that you're on. It's not the biggest of displays, but it works. One downside is that it's a sealed battery. I say it's sealed. It looks like it wouldn't be a massive job to replace the battery because the screws holding the back on are very obvious. But I have to point out, it's not a straightforward swap out the battery when it's not working like you can on the 5372. It's just a straight back off, stick a new battery in, or indeed get an extended battery if you really wanted to. It's a Cat6 router, which means on the LTE standard, long-term evolution, your router is graded by Cat6. Obviously it goes a lot higher, I think up to Cat18. Cat6 means 300 megabits maximum download 50 megabits maximum upload. Takes a micro SIM. It also has a micro SD card slot, which is just under the hood in the back there. Problem with that is, officially the maximum size you can use is 32 gigabytes, but it has to be formatted at FAT32, which is a bit prehistoric and pretty much limits, obviously, the size of the file you can put on there. But you can choose to share that file via USB only, or you can have it via Wi-Fi, which I believe only. So one of those two methods you can sh share. Obviously USB means it's only gonna be shared on your laptop, but Wi-Fi means anyone accessing the router that you're allowing to access the router will be able to access that SD card, albeit with certain limitations. You can connect up to 32 devices. It is both 2G and 5G. When I'm connected, I get a 585 megabit link. So, you know, a pretty hefty link, but there is a big but. Now, one of the th points about this is, you can use this to make your hardwired broadband Wi-Fi. So if you're in a hotel or something and they've only got hardwired, 
you can plug it into the Ethernet slot and suddenly your Ethernet broadband is now wireless. The problem with that is it only supports 100 megabits. It's not gigabyte Ethernet. So it's 100 megabit Ethernet on the back. Well, and there you do have your charging port. You do have your USB out. Now you can use it as a power bank, you know, and it's a reasonable size for a power bank. Of course, you'd end up with no battery on your actual unit, but in an emergency, you've got a 6,400 milliamp battery. You've also got on the back, the WPS button, your power button on off, and you do get a little wrist strap, a little strap that threads through there. I didn't particularly like it. I've taken it off, but you do get that when you buy it along with the unit. Now, so the main points about me buying that, by the way, this bit of felt is only on there because I sometimes attach a separate battery for what more than 24 hours. So in terms of what I bought it for, is that an upgrade on the smaller unit in terms of not just battery life? Do I get a better signal? So a quick test. First of all, right next to it, let's test the difference in download speeds. So I'm connected to the 5885. I'm going to do a download upload test. So not the greatest ever. I will point out I'm in a bit of a dead spot. I'm getting basically 11 megabits download, just over two megabits upload. My maximum would be on my Wi-Fi 70 download, 20 upload. But the signal strength in this area is never good. Although it does say I'm on 4G. Now I will switch to the 5372. Retest. So I'm getting six megabits download, which is nearly half I got on the 5885, but my upload is a little bit better. It was 2.27, it's now 3.22. It's within margins. In terms of download, it was a lot better, but as I say, I'm in a bit of a dead spot. My ping was also worse using the 5372. I am now going to have a look at the actual signal strength that I'm getting. So even just sitting next to both the units, 5372 minus 53 dB, the 5885 minus 38. It's about a 16 decibel stronger signal sitting next to it with the 5885, which is the main reason I bought it was for a stronger signal because I won't always be sitting next to it. I may be in another room. So I'm going to show you the signal from a different room through a wall. So I've got them in a separate room. It's two walls away, it's two rooms away. So it's a fair distance away. In terms of actual distance, it's probably about 20 foot. But we've got walls in between. I'm now getting a difference of 66, 78. So around minus 12, so maybe less of a difference, but still a big difference. It's a still a much stronger signal with the 5885, which was the main reason. So I've got a bigger battery, a stronger signal. And to see the effect on a download, I'll do the download test again. So first of all, testing, the smaller unit, the 5372. So it's now dropped to 3.4 megabits per second download, 0.78 megabits per second upload. I'm gonna swap the SIM out and now do the large unit, the 5885. I'm now linked to the 5885 from two rooms away, the same place as the 5372. I'm gonna retest. So it obviously is in a stronger signal area. I'm now getting 27.29 megabits download. Still crappy upload 1.27, but the big news is there's a big difference now between 5885 and the 5372, which is what I wanted. If I'm going a little bit mobile, room to room, I'm getting a much stronger signal. I get much stronger signal and I'm getting better downloads on the 5885, the larger unit. Yeah, more expensive. Yes, it's a much newer unit. And so it was a decent upgrade for me. Um, I just wanted to put it out there. It's something I bought, but I'm pretty happy with. Something you might want to keep in mind. One thing I will say, which impressed me, was I was not expecting, by default, it uses dynamic frequency selection channels, DFS, on auto mode. So these are the channels which, you know, theoretically can be shared with a radar, but there's never really normally a radar around and it will look for interference free channels and use those channels. The only downside being when you restart the router 
this is a bigger delay. It can be quite, you know, it can be a few minutes before you can reconnect. But it does mean you're going to get a stronger signal, a clearer signal. And not all the mobile routers that I've tried, you know, will do that. They normally stick to the non-DFS channels. So I thought that was pretty good. Should also point out it does support NFC. A big downside is not necessarily a huge downside actually, but should point out whereas on the, the smaller unit you can attach an external aerial, there are no connections on the larger unit to do that, which was seemed a bit weird, but you know, it's not a deal breaker for me because you know I find them fiddly to use. I had, am using that on the move and I'm trying to use a fiddly free setup. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that device and I hope you got something out of my video. So thank you for watching. UK.